What's up guys and girls? Welcome back to some more Pokemon Zeta and Omicron. We are at the top of Mount Press, or at least I'm assuming we're somewhere near the top, and it is apparently 7.13 a.m. Oh my goodness, I have still not gone to bed, and I'm ready to record some Pokemon. Anyway, haven't made a video in a little bit. I've uh, actually, like you may have noticed, uh, been waking up super duper late, and I think this is actually our last repel since I was just going backtracking. I went to the nurse, as you can see, Loki has healed up since last time he actually died. Uh, but anyway, we're here at the top of the mountain, and I think we are going to some kind of Team Fusion event very soon. Like I said, it's been a little bit since the last time I recorded, so we will see exactly what is going on and where we're headed to uh, as we get there, I guess. So first off, though, we're going to start off with Mrs. Goldilocks and Pinky Locks. Very interesting name that their parents gave those two kids there. Those two little girl twins, Goldilocks and Pinky Locks. Not sure if I would choose those names for my kids myself, especially if they were my two daughters, but I mean, to each their own, I guess. So anyway, uh, I have been not really busy, but I've been waking up pretty late lately, and Hyrule Warriors came out a few days ago, so I've been recording that and streaming it with my friend Sully. If you guys haven't checked it out, I actually posted a video about it yesterday, um, about us streaming, so... Yeah, if you haven't checked it out yet, part 1, and I think by the time this video goes out, part 2 might be out, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, go check it out, I will link his channel in the description, and we've been playing that co-op, and it's a really, really fun game, so you should definitely check it out, and yeah, I've, been, I've basically been doing that, so... Basically, I wake up late and go and record with him, and by the time I get back home, it's already super late, so... Yeah, I, I guess it's been half laziness, half, um... Well, pretty much just me being lazy, I guess. So, uh, definitely trying to become not lazy, and actually, I feel like I got a little bit of newfound inspiration. Is this a shiny Reuniclus? It kind of looks like a shiny, but I don't think it is, because I think it would have that little star. I think when we battled Sableye in an earlier episode, and it was a shiny, uh, it actually had the little shiny star symbol, even in the battle. I'm not 100% sure on that, but... I don't know, shiny Reuniclus is a little bit weird colored looking, and this one's a little bit off, I guess, so I don't know. Anyway, like I was just saying, I've been lazy lately, and I found a little bit of newfound motivation, I guess. Um, so hopefully, I will get back to the daily Zeta and Omicron videos, and I'm actually finally starting work on, not the new top 10 exactly, because I think I'm gonna wait until after PAX for that one, but since I don't want to overburden myself and end up getting lazy, I'm actually just gonna work on the first Pokemon... Uh, mega evolution speculation type video, so I'm gonna be working on that and hopefully that comes out before PAX. PAX is at the end of the month, by the way, if you guys didn't know about it. It is basically a gaming convention that goes on every year, actually twice a year, maybe even three times a year starting next year. They're gonna have one in um, Texas, which I think I might be going to as well. So if you haven't heard of it at this point, which uh, you may have heard of it because I've been going to PAX, for the last almost two years now, I think actually this marks the two year anniversary that I've been going to PAX Prime and PAX East. Um, I've gone to all of them since PAX Prime last year, so, or no, not last year, two years ago. So yeah, anyway, um, a lot of times I end up meeting some of you guys there, so if you're going, definitely, I will make a video about it later on. But yeah, before that happens, which is at the end of the month, literally like at the 29th to the 1st of September, something like that. Um, I'm definitely gonna try and get out that first, at least the first one, because I feel like once I get out the first one and see what you guys think of it and how the video goes, because I'm still basically very early in, in even working out how the video's gonna be, because, I don't know, for those videos at least, it might seem like they're kind of easy to make, but at least for myself, I'm very perfectionist and kind of have OCD with a lot of things like that, so, yeah, it takes a lot of time for me to actually even work on that, but, Work is actually starting now, which means that, you know, I'm not being lazy anymore. The script is starting to come together, so... Yeah, once the first one is out, though, and I see if you guys actually enjoy them or not, I will definitely be, I feel, a little more motivated to make them more often, because it's basically just getting out that first video that's a problem for me. I guess it was kind of like that for the top 10. The thing with the top 10s, though, is I still got lazy, but I feel like this will be a little bit easier. The top 10s... The thing is, I suck at writing scripts for those, because, yeah... I don't really, I don't like doing improv videos just because I always seem to just blabber on about whatever it is that I might be thinking of, like these videos. That's why I have my Let's Play videos. These are the videos where I can blabber on about whatever thoughts might come to my mind. The top tens and those, uh, the X, or the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire speculation and updates, those I actually like to script out because, 
while, while I'm giving my opinion still, it's not like a jumbled mess of just, I don't know. Sometimes I have tried to do like live reaction videos and literally I just end up blabbering on and on about random things. Sometimes even things that don't have to do with the actual video. So I like to keep those to actually be things that have to do with whatever the video is about. Anyway, that's probably enough talk about, I guess, me being lazy. But yeah, work is starting on that. Hopefully you guys will see it in the upcoming next week. Or, I, mean, I don't want to say week, probably before PAX though, so in the next two weeks it will definitely be out. Like I said, once I actually get to work and have the script ready and all that. The video itself, I love editing, so editing is definitely an easy part as far as that goes. But yeah, like I said, hopefully you guys enjoy that, and if you do, then I'll definitely probably do more since after that, it'll be, I want it to be kind of a community driven thing because I, oh, the first idea I have will be something that I've been wanting to do for a while, but then after that, you guys can leave suggestions and things, and it'll be a lot easier to work on, so... I don't know, man. I feel like I'm giving very vague hints as to what I'm talking about right now, but nothing, like, too detailed, just because I don't want to give it away. But yeah, basically, it's Mega Evolution Speculation videos. I talked about it in a previous video, so you guys may have heard of it. But, um, yeah, I guess that's enough of that. So, I have no idea what is going on in the game. Like I said, after this battle, I guess we will try and figure that out. We still don't have our beautiful Stun Fisk in our party, so... It's kind of hard to take out these flying types. Literally, we have nothing that is really good against flying types, so... I'm just gonna go for my... Go for some strong attacks like Lava Plume and hope that it takes it out, but... Yeah, not having an Electric or an Ice-type Pokemon, or just anything that can use Electric or Ice moves is actually really hindering us so far uh, in this playthrough, just because... I, there's nothing easy to take out flying types with basically plus being in the snow right now not the most fun thing So I'm just gonna take out the rest of this guy or the rest of his Pokemon and probably any other Pokemon that might be around here And I'll see you guys after that. You know my random uh, Just talking to myself I guess has led me to a very crazy Situation that I never really thought about so I was thinking uh, Cuz am I uh, the, the that chick had a Milo tick as her last Pokemon, right? So I was thinking, why is grass exactly strong against water? And then I was like, I'm gonna, like, shouldn't water heal a plant up? But then I used Giga Drain, and I was like, wow, okay, so we actually did heal up from this water. And then I realized, grass-type Pokemon are strong against water and ground, because they suck off the nutrients from the ground, which is the ground-type part, and they also need water to survive. So it makes perfect sense, man. You know, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm dumb. That I never thought about it, that is. But, uh... Yeah, just talking to myself and thinking to myself, I guess, rather. Well, I was literally talking to myself for no reason, I guess, because I was just bored of that battle. But anyway, I thought of myself to that. What else is grass even strong against? Like, basically a lot of, um, I never really thought about how the Pokemon type effectiveness is actually make sense in the world. Because I know that psychic types, um, has been explained a lot of times because they are the common fears of humans. It's like, when you're a psychic type Pokemon, they fear ghosts, which is obviously ghost type Pokemon. The darkness, another common fear of humans, so they fear dark types. And bugs, which a lot of people surprisingly are scared of bugs, so yeah, those are the three weaknesses of psychic type. But there's probably a lot more Pokemon type effectivenesses that make a lot of sense like that grass type one that I just never really think of, because who really thinks about stuff like that? It's probably just me, because I'm weird and crazy and... I don't know, I have these weird thoughts in my head and nowhere to put them, except just locked up in my brain. So sometimes when those crazy thoughts come out, they just kind of lock into my mind and make a lot of sense. And to you guys, it probably sounds like purely common sense, like, duh, it's a grass Pokemon, grass likes water and ground, so it's super effective on them. But, I don't know, there's a, probably a lot of other type effectiveness that, the, the other ones are really obvious though, like, see, this is a steel type. Fire melts steel, so obviously fire is good against steel. But I guess that would help me out to remember all the type, uh, all the type effectiveness. Because sometimes I forget some of them, and people call me out and say, "You're a noober. Why do you have this Pokemon channel when you don't even know your type effectiveness is?" But it's mostly like newer ones or ones that I just don't really see that often that I forget. Like, uh, why is fairy? Why does fire resist fairy types? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't really get that. Could a fairy, like, get burned by the fire so it's, like, scared of it? I don't know. You just, you just gotta think about it sometimes. Like, why do fairy... Why are fairy Pokemon weak to poison and steel? Like, I, that's... I mean... When you think about it, 
Like, I can't really make out why that would be, you know? So those are ones that don't make a lot of sense to me. But everything else is kind of obvious. Water conducts electricity, so, you know, water is weak to electricity. Steel, why is steel weak to fighting? I don't know, I guess you can punch steel walls and make holes in them. Who knows, man? Maybe Chuck Norris liked to fight steel walls, and that's why Pokemon was like, yeah, you know, we like Chuck Norris, people like Chuck Norris, he's a cool guy, right? He can become, like, a... He's a the kids like Chuck Norris, so let's put... Let's make steel... So I, don't, I don't know what I'm saying right now, man. Alright, we need to take out this Scizor, though. He's very weak to fire, though, because he's also a bug, and bugs get burned by magnifying glasses, which means they're weak to fire, so go, my, shoot him with your fire. Makes a little bit more sense. But yeah, there's some of them that really just, like, I, I can't make out why that is. Like, why exactly are... Um... Let's think of one that doesn't... That, that just, like, it's like, why? Because, I mean... Flying types, they all kind of make sense. You can throw rocks at birds, that kills them. It's like two birds with one stone. That's a common saying, right? So, electric types, obviously birds can get shocked by lightning. Ice, you know, I guess maybe it can get too cold. But then again, like almost any Pokemon could like die if it gets too cold, I guess. I don't know. They're, they're living beings. Unless they're heavily coated, the cold can really bother a lot of people. Except Elsa. But you already know that reference, so... Anyway, how about we stop talking about the obvious here? It is fun to think about stuff like this sometimes, though. So, you know, in the comments below, let me know which one you think is the least type effectiveness that, that least makes sense to you. Because I can't think of them off the top of my head, but you guys let me know in the comments. Because I love interacting with you guys down there, and you guys also have some insight that I never really think of. So, if you know any really crazy type effectivenesses that, like, don't really make sense, or if you can explain them, actually, that would be really cool, too, because, like, fairy type, I don't understand any of the type effectivenesses or weaknesses of them. Like, I, what, the only thing I can think of is fairies are, like, mythical creatures, right? And then, like, steel would mean, like, machines. So, it's kind of like machines are taking over the fairies, so they would be weak to it, but it's just steel. So, I don't know, man. If you know, though, let me know, like I said, uh, as well as any other ones that don't really make much sense, because I was thinking just now, flying types are good against fighting, and they're good against grass, and it's like, why is fighting, or why is flying good against grass? Maybe against fighting, because fighting Pokemon are usually on the ground, so you know, it's like the common thing that having the upper ground makes you fight, or have an advantage, so... I guess flying Pokemon could literally be dashing down into fighting types, and they wouldn't be able to get damage, because they're up in the air, so... I don't know, I guess that kind of makes sense, but then... You know, there's just some that don't make sense, so let me know. Like Heracross here, he's a nice little fighting bug, so uh, we're gonna take him out, and we're also gonna take out the rest of this guy's Pokemon, and hopefully come up with uh, something that makes a little bit more sense to converse about here, as my head starts to grow in pain, because I didn't eat yet, maybe. I actually ate pancakes. My goodness, the next game that we play through here needs to have a speed up button of some sort, because I have become way too reliant on that thing, and now regular Pokemon games are just, like, impossible for my brain to comprehend. Anyway, obviously, this stone looks a little bit special here. I thought it would be a hidden item, but I believe this will be where you can evolve your Eevee into Glaceon, so... I don't know, that's probably just my educated guess. It makes the most sense to me, and hey, what you doing here, Obama Snow? Obama Snow, shouldn't you be back in DC where the Pokemon Symphony's going on? And I'm so jealous that everyone that got to go because I really wanted to go, but... I couldn't get the plane ticket because it was really expensive and I didn't know about it in time. Anyway... Anyway... Like I was saying, my head kind of hurts right now, so... My head may- oh my goodness, another Pokemon trainer. Yeah, I've become very, very dependent on the speed up button, as I'm sure a lot of you other guys out there... Whether you do YouTube videos or just play Pokemon on emulators, um, you have probably gotten used to the speed up button. And even, even if you don't, watching YouTube videos of other people with it, it's just so much nicer because, I mean, I can sit here and play this all day. I love Pokemon, but battles, at least, have just become so dependent on having that speed up. It just makes them go so much faster. And I don't know, for Pokemon gym battles and stuff like that, you guys know I never really speed those up. But I'm used to that. I'm used to, like, every every once in a while, you know, an important battle, I won't speed up. But every single little trainer battle, I mean, I guess I haven't talked about it in the entire playthrough, but it didn't really hit me until now. Because now it's been a little bit since I recorded last time, and it's like, I come back to it, 
and I guess I expected to go through all these battles really fast, but I've come to just, like, it just hit my mind that we've been, we've done this whole game so far without having that, and I guess I've been, I've been very reliant on it, you know? You get something good, and then when it gets taken away, you miss it so much more, I guess. Is there a saying like that? I feel like there's a saying like that, and I'm just saying it really badly. It's like, you never know... Wait, I, oh my gosh, it's, it's clicking into my mind, because someone told me this once. You, you never know how much you'll miss something until you lose it. Something like that, man. I don't know, you guys probably know what the saying actually goes like, so if you do know, let me know. Anyway, it's something like that. Basically, now that I don't have the speed up button, I actually miss it so much and uh, realize how dependent you are on it. Just like a lot of things. There's probably a lot of things that I'm very dependent on, and I won't actually realize how dependent I am on it until I lose it. Which I guess would be the internet for literally everyone watching this video, probably. Because I'm sure if you're watching these kinds of videos, you've definitely been on the internet at least a little bit enough to find out about these kinds of hack games. Or I guess this is its own standalone fan game, but yeah. In order to find out about these, you'd have to have been on the internet at least for a little bit, so... I'm assuming that most of you guys that watch this uh, are avid internet fans and users, so imagine if we just lost the internet tomorrow. How many people would just go crazy? I know that I definitely would because literally my life is on here. My job, my friends, well most of my friends and some of them now I live with, but anyway, literally everything is on here, so... I mean, I guess that would be a thing where literally you would definitely notice once it's lost, but... I mean, it's just, it's crazy to think how actually dependent we are on it. Like, think of how many easy, simple, everyday life things you do that require the internet that you don't really think about. Like, if I were to go to the store right now, I mean, I'm one of the, those people that usually actually pay attention and would probably know how to get, like, let's say, I don't even drive, but I could probably get to Walmart if I didn't have Google Maps. But even still, even if I did get one, once I get my car, I'm still probably going to use it just because you want to have that safety net kind of there. And... Think of how many people probably wouldn't know how to get anywhere without having that. It's just a simple thing that we're very reliant on. Or just any GPS in general is what I'm trying to say, so... Yeah, other things, I guess, you know, how many people would probably go nuts if they didn't have Twitter? Because so many people I see every day, they tweet so, so much. I mean, I'm not much of a social media person. I literally don't really care much for Twitter, aside from giving you guys updates or just random funny things that I find, or something that I think you guys will find interesting, that's why I promote it so much, because a lot of times, I'll either post whenever, like, I'm not having a video, or whenever I find something funny related to Pokemon, or video games, or anime, or anything that I think you guys might find interesting. But there are people that are literally glued to Twitter, and just tweet anything that they might be thinking. Imagine how those people would feel if Twitter just disappeared tomorrow. Like, imagine how many times you would just grab your phone, and think, man, I should tweet this, but then you can't actually because Twitter doesn't exist anymore. Uh, of course, all of this is hypothetical because, obviously, if Twitter didn't exist, there would probably be something very similar to it that people would go to and flock to, but I'm saying if social media wasn't a thing. And you can't really, you know, use the excuse like, oh well, social media didn't used to exist and people got along just fine. But the thing is, we've become so reliant on it and just sharing our thoughts with the world through them all the time. I guess that's just phones in general, though. It's just like, think of how many times, if you're like me at least, and you use your phone a lot, think of how many times you pick up your phone just to look at it and don't actually do anything on it. Because at least for me, since I text a lot and get on social media and YouTube and just, in general, use my phone for a lot of things. That's if you have a smartphone, of course. If you have a regular phone and just use it for, like, calling people, then obviously it's not going to be that big a deal. But, yeah, there's so many times a day where I just pick up my phone get on the whatever Twitter, just refresh my feed, look at it, and then literally do nothing. Just close my phone again. So, simple things like that would definitely change. And man, we have gone into a dark, deep territory or just thoughts today. The internet not existing. That is an interesting thought. I would... I don't know, man. I feel like my life would pretty much be over, at least my social life, which is kind of sad that, you know, thinking that your social life is on the internet, but that is a lot of people right now, so... I don't know, I just feel like I really wouldn't talk to that many people. Um, I guess I would probably be a lot more social with people around me, but then again, I wouldn't be in Nebraska, which is where I live now, and I don't really have any friends here yet. I would probably still be back in Puerto Rico, and have my regular friends from high school, which I met 
not through the internet, so, I don't know, I guess maybe things would still be flowing, but I'm just saying if it disappeared now, like, with being reliant on it, it would be pretty tough, man. We are now out of Giga Drain, though, because I don't know, I've been talking for so long that we've somehow run out of Giga Drains, it doesn't exactly have the most PP for a move, but that's fine. I've also just realized that we've just now finally started fighting Team Olympus Grunts, even though I said at the very beginning of this episode, which was already 25 minutes ago, that we were going to be fighting Team Olympus today, we have just now started fighting them, so I'm probably going to go ahead and skip the rest of the battles here, and I will see you guys whenever we make it to the end, because there are going to be a lot. Thankfully, there's another nurse there, so yeah, I will see you guys once we make it to that other nurse. Hey, Munching Orange here, just wanting to say that, uh, Audacity crashed, which is what I used to record audio, and so now I'm back here in the game, where we started the episode, lit, everything that I just did, did, didn't save, so, might be a shorter episode, I don't know, but I sure as heck don't want to do all that again, so, <laughs> I will go ahead and catch back up by the next episode, hopefully. You know, a quick, simple push of a button would have saved us all, but I suck. I'm stupid and dumb. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, I, I don't know, man. Thanks for watching. I'm really tired. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.